What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of FTB Inventions. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, you know, we were doing some stuff over here. We're setting up a building where we could set up our applied energistics. We kind of laid out, you know, the frame of what the building's going to be. We kind of decided how we wanted everything spaced, and these grass blocks represent where our auto crafters are going to be. Uh, I also dug out a little basement down here so we can put, like, our ME controller and run our wires and things like that. And, yeah, guys, I've been doing some stuff off camera here. In fact, it took me a little bit longer than I thought I was going to than I thought it was going to take, uh, but I ended up building like an underground tunnel here that connects both buildings together underneath. This is so we can run our ME cables under here. It's only going to do like a, you know, a one by two or something. So I could walk under there with the cable, maybe one by three. So the cable could be above me and we could still walk, but I kind of felt like it'd be neat if we just had underground tunnels that our wires are going to be up above. Yeah, I think that'll be kind of cool. So we could run our wires, you know, along the ceiling or whatever, and we wind up over here. Our ME controller is probably going to be down here along with our automatic processor contraptions that make, you know, the gold, the diamond processors, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so anyway, yeah, I was doing this off camera. This didn't take that long. Um, what really took the long time was making all the processors that I needed for all the things that we're going to be building and have built. So I have made myself two more ME controllers. I made myself a whole bunch of these ME dense cables, uh, 2864K storage components. Yeah, this is where a lot of the time went in. Um, I think you get from three stacks of gold ingots. If you convert those all into gold processors and convert those all into storage components of 1K, I think you will end up with seven. <laughs> seven one k or i'm sorry seven sixty four k if you take all those one k's and convert them all the way up to the sixty four k i think you get a few extra components left over so we have some like one four and sixteen k upstairs i think in our ae system we could take a look real quick i can't remember how many extras we ended up having okay it looks like we have one sixteen and one four k so anyway i've done this like eight times right or i'm sorry i've done this four times <laughs> yeah we have a uh, 2864k storage. So I was thinking what we're going to do. Uh, I think our ses our system over here where our auto crafters are, uh, we need two 64k storage component per, right? So that's 16. Um, so that's like two stacks of these, almost a little over two stacks. And then for one of our ME drives, that requires 10 disks or it can hold up to 10 disks. So there's that. Then we got like two left over for future expansion. Anyway, I got tired of doing all those processors by hand because it's like you put in the gold and you got to let them process through. We only have one inscriber here and it's just taking forever. And then we got to do the same thing with silicon. Look, I have all this extra silicon that I've uh, turned into the printed silicon. Mm -hmm. I did add in a second inscriber over here for turning the, the components into the full processors. But I never added another one over here to <laughs> uh, have the routers add in. Like, we don't have extra silicon presses, so we only we could only support one inscriber. I'd have to make another one of those, which is fine. I just didn't want to do too many things without you guys. Uh, so anyway, most of the time spent was waiting on those processors to be made, making those 64K storage components and all of this stuff. But we still got a lot more stuff to do, guys. Uh, we still have to make everything pretty much. Uh, all of the auto crafters. We have to make the terminals. We have to do all of this stuff. We're going to want to get wireless hooked up at some point. Yeah, there's a lot of things to do today. And I think we're going to be focusing mostly on applied energistics. Uh, so probably one of the more important things I'd like to do, you can see we got red lights on here. That means these discs have too much stuff. They can't fit anything else on there. Their bytes are completely used. And in some cases, their types are too. Um, we want to start moving these over to... 10k i'm sorry 64k drives these 10 storage components we need to turn into discs so let's do a 64k this right here so we can make them with some quartz glass and redstone and some iron i think we're gonna do that let's just go ahead and make all 10 of those hopefully i have everything in the system we do cool all right so we got 10 of those ready to go now we need to transfer all the stuff off this stuff off these 1k discs onto the 64k and that's going to make, or that's going to free up a little bit of room, I think. Uh, so we have an MEIO port. We've done this many times before. But for those of you who haven't seen it before, to get stuff off one disk onto another, you have to use the MEIO port. So what we're going to do is we're just pretty much going to remove all of our 1K disks, and we're going to fill it all up. Oop. 
with the 64 key. So all these, all of our stuff is in my inventory right now, basically. So the way this works, the MEIO port, we can do from disk to network, or we can do from network to disk. Um, yeah, so we're going to do this from a disk onto the network. So that should pretty much defragment all of our data onto these drives. And I don't expect half of these are going to have stuff on them. Oh, let's get rid of all this stuff. Yeah, and as they finish up transferring, the blank ones end up over on this side. So it looks like actually, yeah, three of them. Oh, I guess six of them have stuff on them. We had that many different types. But yeah, these discs are still like half full. So they got plenty of room for more things. No red light. So that is awesome. Uh, we can take the one keys apart like that. We get the storage housings back. So I can use these one keys to upgrade to the four and then the fours to the 16 and the 16s to the 64 key eventually. So the, yeah, that's pretty cool. So we also have to make storage comp or um, crafting components. Let's see. We have to make the crafting storages, but we just need to make these crafting units. Okay, so we need to make like, how many did we say? <laughs> Was it eight of those? I can't remember now. We should probably figure that out before I make too many. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we need 16 of the crafting components or crafting units. Okay, so that's more calculation logic and calculation processors. We only have a stack of the calculation. I think we have enough to do this. Let's go ahead. We might not have enough glass cables. So we need 16 of these things. Let's see how many we can make right now. Oh yeah, we got enough in there. Nice. Okay, so we can do that and we can put those like this and there's our 64K crafting storage. Nice. Uh, so then we also have to make the crafting coprocessor. I think that's more of those store or crafting units. Yeah. And then engineering processors. How many of those do we have? We have, <laughs> yeah, about 300 of these things. Yeah. I've been busy guys. Okay. So let's go ahead. We'll make, I think it's the same amount. We have to make 16 of those, uh, and then put those with the processors and then we should be good to go. And then we're going to have to worry about actually making the interfaces and the auto crafting units themselves. Okay. So we need these diamond processors. Let's do this and this. Done. Cool. So now we got that sorted. Uh, we just need the actual crafting units themselves and we should be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start laying these out. Uh, try and get some wiring going. We need to move our AE setup from there to here and then run wires from here back over there. So we have access to stuff. Uh, anyway, let me go ahead and get some stuff done and we'll be right back guys. All right, guys, so I set up the auto crafting stuff. Well, I set up <laughs> the 64K storage and the co-processors. You can kind of see them up above me. And I ran one of these dense cables over there. There are no P2P channels in this mod pack. You have to run the dense cables. So, yeah, I was running the dense cables, and I started digging them into the floor a little bit. And I was like, you know, we really don't have a lot of room here. Uh, it's going to look pretty ugly when we got to run dense cables from this unit and this unit together. It's just going to be a big mess. We have to jump over them. Things aren't going to look good. So uh, I think that I did in Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Expert Mode was that in the AE room, we had like a basement or at least a place to run wires underneath where the Applied Energistics was. So our AE stuff's going to be up here. This floor right here, uh, that's where our controller is going to be. We might move it down lower later on. I'm not, I haven't really fully decided what we're doing right now. Uh, but yeah, that's where our controller is going to be. It's kind of like in this room for right now. And then we're also going to have like the stuff, like I said before, for making processors, for making Fluex, for, uh, you know, making, I guess, the pure Certus and all of this stuff. That's going to be on this level. We might dig into this wall a little bit. We might sit it out here on the glass floor. Haven't fully decided how that's all going to work. But we have like these big, thick cables and yeah, if they're kind of like flush with the floor, we're going to step over them or whatever. That's just going to be a pain. I think it's just going to be easier to run them straight down and then kind of like deal with the wiring underneath and then just have them come straight up where they need to be. So that is the way we are running this right now. Uh, yeah, like I said, this is originally the plan I was going to do. This was all stone, but I just decided that's not good. Yeah, it's just not good. <laughs> we want to run them straight down, run them over to where they want to be, and then straight up again. So I'm in the process right now, as you can see. Got a lot of blocks to clear out to make this thing look right. So we're going to have to get this thing all lit up. 
Don't really know how we're going to do the lighting and all that. We'll figure that out as well. Uh, I don't think there's too many non-mob non spawnable blocks in this pack. There are a few, but I don't think we have too many of them. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to continue digging this out. <laughs> going to try and clean this all up. We'll probably just leave it all stone for now, and we'll pick out the blocks sometime soon. I don't want to leave this too long. I want to make sure we get things finished up here. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get this dug out, and we'll be back, guys. All right, guys. Well, I got a little bit of work done here. We got our two extra ME drives. We have our main ME drive with all of our 64K storage disks move over, moved over. Uh, we have an ME interface terminal, which we didn't have before, and an ME pattern terminal, which we didn't have before. So pretty much all of our storage is now here in our applied energistics area, which is open, no walls, vulnerable to creepers or whatever. Should we AFK here? Let's not AFK here. Uh, anyway... Uh, when I got all these things hooked up together, we got a new achievement. We got the Network Apprentice, and it says reach eight channels using devices on a network. Now, I was under the impression, I, I haven't really done this before, but I was under the impression that that was like if you reach eight channels on one specific line. That's not the way that works, apparently. So it's eight channels total on your entire network. So this cable up here has six, and this cable down here has two. So I guess, I guess two and six is eight which gives us that achievement. Yeah, I didn't know that's the way that worked. I always assumed it was like one cable that has eight channels or more on it. So anyway, <laughs> that's the way uh, we got this hooked up now. Um, so the cable runs underneath the glass floor and over here and up. Obviously this is gonna be changed. I don't really like the fact that we're like floating above like a pit. Uh, that looks kind of weird to me. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I'd like to do, let's come up here actually real quick. Let's grab some stone. Yeah, so I can kind of show you guys. Uh, one thing that I do want to do is we're probably going to get rid of the fact that this is a completely clear glass floor that butts right up against the wall. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of this. So I'll probably end up coming through here and doing something like this, placing some kind of a border all the way around. I think that'll make it look better. Uh, obviously, this will be filled in, and this won't be stone when we're done. This will be whatever our material is down here. <laughs> Actually, we should probably grab our builder's wand. That'll make quicker work of this entire process. Yeah, so we'll probably have like borders all the way around something like this, like that, all the way around. So it'll be, yeah, it'll just look a little bit nicer, I think maybe. So we don't enter or exit the hallway onto glass. Anyway, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, we'll have to figure out what this material is gonna be. It's not gonna be stone, like I said, uh, but things that I wanna start doing, we have like these auto crafting things, or at least these two over here hooked up. I want to get some auto crafting going so I'm not having to craft everything by hand. So yeah, we need to make a few things. Oh yeah, actually the interface we have to make, we need like two of these. I guess we only need one, but let's just make some of these together. So we'll make some annihilation cores. We will make some formation cores. Uh, I guess we'll make 28 cause I accidentally shift click those. And there is two ME interfaces. Okay. So we have that done. Um, we are also going to need the crafting, no, the, I can't remember. Is it assembler? I think that's what it is. The molecular assembler. So we need some of these. Okay. So that requires a crafting table. So let's make two crafting tables and hopefully we can make two of these. Nice. Okay. So this is pretty much what we need to get us started. All right. So the way these work, uh, we have the two 64 K crafting and then two crafting co-processors. Uh, we can just stick a couple interfaces like this and a couple of these molecular assemblers like this, and the interfaces will push items into here. It'll craft it and push them back, right? Cool. So we can stack this three more layers tall, just like this. Just have to, you know, alternate the interfaces with the assemblers. So this is the kind of auto crafting units I've always made. I haven't found anything better. I've asked you guys in the past that there's a better way to do it, and nobody's ever told me a better way to do this. I've never really tried exploring it. There's better ways. So this is the way we're doing it. Um, each one of these assemblers has spots in here for the acceleration card. So we need to get those going because these kind of auto craft slowly without them. Uh, so there's a few things we need to make here. Uh, let's go ahead. We need to make ourselves some blank patterns. I think we need two of these to start. So, or maybe we only needed one. <laughs> anyway, we'll stick this right here and we'll tell this to make a blink pattern. So this will set the pattern for this. So we can always create blink patterns. 
I don't think you have to do pure Certus. Yeah, we can do charge or regular Certus. In fact, let's change this now. So it's regular Certus. Oop, wrong one. Glowstone. Yeah, that way it's just easier. If we have the regular Certus, um, yeah, we don't have to worry about processing it and letting it convert into the pure. We can just do it straight away this way. So we'll go ahead and change this over here. So this says it's one Certus Quartz Crystal, three Iron, two Quartz Glass, and three Glowstone Dust. Cool. So we can always make Blink Patterns now. Let's stick it right in there. And now we should be able to do Blink Pattern. And let's just make like 10 of those. All right, so it's not slow, but it can be way faster. All right, so we got 10 of those now, and we can just go ahead and take this over to here and fill this up, and we can start making some other things. So things we probably want to make, the Annihilation Core and the Formation Core, these guys right here. Let's get these things out of crafting. What is this missing? Fluix Dust. Yeah, we're going to have to get a lot of this stuff done. Do we have any Fluix? Okay, yeah, we do have Fluix, but no Fluix dust. So I'm going to go ahead and make up like a half a stack or a stack of this stuff, I guess. Uh, over here, we'll make the pattern for it. I'm just going to go ahead and make a few more patterns so we can get some auto crafting started. But that's the basis on how that works. If you haven't seen that before, um, yeah, eventually we'll have this set up. So if we tell our system to make some Fluix dust, it'll send the things right over here to our sag mill or a pulverizer, whatever we're using. Yeah, and it'll just start doing this and send it back into the system, and things will be really, really good then. Okay, so like I said, let me just go ahead and make a few of these patterns. We've seen one of them made. I'll just make a few of them so we can get some auto-crafting going, and we'll be right back, guys. Okay, guys, so I've been making some good progress here. I got one of our auto-crafting units set up over here. Yeah, we got one of eight of these things finally set up. Uh, we have the acceleration cards put in all of these now, so they are maximum speed. We're only using these... Two interfaces on the bottom row. I think actually, no, we might have been using a third. We can see all the different interfaces on our network coming over here to our interface terminal. Yeah, actually, we're using four of those now that I'm looking at this thing. So, yeah, I've started making a bunch of patterns for a lot of our applied energistic stuff that we're going to be crafting a lot of. Uh, pistons are used in like the inscriber recipe, and the crafting table is used, I think, in the interface recipe, or maybe it was one of the other terminal recipes anyway. Uh, as we've needed items, I have been making patterns for them. Yeah, and they're just automatically going into whichever interface over here can accept them, which is fine. Um, so things that I want to work on right now. Yeah, every time I make a pattern, it tries to do like the pure version of whichever crystal. So like this capacity card, it shows charged, it shows certus, and it shows the pure. If I try and make a pattern out of this, it automatically goes to the pure one. So it kind of makes sense. It's more efficient to use the pure version, I believe, to, you know, grind up whatever uh, into the the dust, put it with sand, make the seed, drop the seed into the thing, and then have it grow up. So kind of what I want to do right now is I want to look at making a completely 100% applied energistic version of exporting the seed, dropping into water, using the growth accelerators to speed up this process, and then importing it back into the system when it's completed. I've never done this 100% through Applied Energistics. It sounds like it's going to be a fun little challenge. So I was trying to think about how this is actually going to work. We want our main system to eject the seed into something that is going to drop it into water, right? So uh, the best way to do this is to have like the system eject it through an interface. And then that interface could go into a chest. Or something along those lines, and then that chest from there we could use a hot or like a dropper or something. Um, so probably the first thing we want to do, let's get an interface set up. Let's get the crystal growth accelerators set up, and we will just go from there. So let's see, we want cables down. We want this growth accelerator probably right here. Well, it probably end up, I assume, <laughs> putting in a solid floor underneath all this stuff when this is all said and done. Uh, but for right now, yeah, we're just going to put this on top of the glass. I'll probably end up rearranging this, like I said. And we'll just connect that like that. And then water in there. Cool. So we have this. We're going to want some kind of a glass tube. So the items, when they fall, they can't go anywhere but straight down into the glass. Yeah, so we'll have something like that. Um, I do believe we can use a formation plane to drop items. All right. 
But in order for this to work, we are actually going to need a way for those items to get from an interface into a formation plane. So I think we're going to end up using sub networks. Mm -hmm. So we'll have like our AE system here hooked up to some kind of like a, an interface, like we said, something like this. This will have the pattern in it or actually it doesn't need the pattern. Yeah. I think this needs the pattern in the interface. This will eject the item, and then what we'll do is we'll have another interface on a sub-network. I think this is how we're going to do this. And that way, this interface will push it into this one. These aren't connected to the same network. This will be on a separate network. Yeah, if this was the full block, it would think it's all a part of this main one. But since it's the cable version, yeah, it's like a separate network here. So this will push into the sub-network, and then from here, we'll figure out how to drop these items. So give me a second here. I got, you know, a bunch of things in my inventory. Let me try and get this all worked out and we'll be right back. Cool. This is a lot more simple than I thought it was going to be. I just was playing around with this, trying to figure out what we need to do here. So the first thing we need to do is give this sub network power. The sub network is just this ME interface, the cable version and this formation plane and this cable. But in order for it to do anything, it needs power. So we need to give it power. So let's take some of these quartz fiber. This will just prevent any data from transferring over. That only allows power through this cable. So when we attach these ME glass cables, it's only gonna have power. So we'll do that and that. Okay, actually, you know what? Let's, I made some red ones just so it's easier for us to distinguish between uh, the power cables and regular data cables. So we'll do that and we'll use these red ones. Again, you can just use the regular Fluix, but the red ones mean power, right? Okay, so we have our ME interface connected to the system here, and we have this over like this, <laughs> and this now will have power. So the first thing we can do is by clicking on this cable interface, if we put an item in here, you can hear something just happened. So what that did is that placed a glass block right below our formation plane, which is close to what we want it to do, but not exactly. So if we right click on the formation plane, there's a button it said blocks would be placed as block, blocks would be dropped as item. That's what we're looking for is a block dropped as item. So if we put in a piece of glass now, we look, yeah, the quite clear glass is down there. Cool. So we can do the same thing. It might be easier to see with like uh, some of these glass cables or something. Kind of saw that fall out of the, the corner there. So there we go. So we are dropping items as they enter into this interface. Whoops. I placed a glass down there in the water. Derp. Let's go and get this all fixed up. So that's exactly what we want. This interface will push it into this interface and that will just straight drop it into the water. So that part of the problem is now solved. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so the next thing is we want to make sure that <laughs> when the items are dropped, we're not sucking them back into the system until they are turned into the correct version of that item, right? So now we need to get ourselves, um, I think it's an annihilation plane under here, but the problem with the annihilations planes is anything that drops on these things, I don't think there's a filter. Let's set this down. Oops. Place that down. <laughs> anything that gets put on front of these things, yeah, it gets sucked up immediately, blocks or items or whatever. So there is no interface on this particular item. Yeah, you can see it right there. Uh, so what we need to do is we're going to use an ME chest. We're going to use a storage cell and we're going to partition this cell so it can only accept certain items on there. So this annihilation plane won't suck anything in unless there's space for it in the network on the sub network. And if we're using the partitioned disc, there won't be space on there unless it, or there won't be space in the system unless it's one of the specific items we tell it to be. So let's grab this thing back. Uh, so we need to figure out uh, which item it is that partitions disks. I thought it was, it was kind of like the security terminal interface, but I forget what it was. Maybe it's the cell workbench. Okay, I think that's what we're gonna need. Oh, it's nighttime. Let's get over to our bed, sleep real quick. So we're going to need the cell workbench that will allow us to put in one of the disks and we should be able to partition it so we can only allow certain items on there. Okay, so let's make the cell workbench real quick. Uh, where is it? I lost it. <laughs> Dang it. All right, found it. So we can make one of these guys. There's a cell workbench. Now these are pretty easy to use. 
set it down, put your storage cell in there. I guess it adds in some of these cards. I'm not sure what those do. Anyway, that doesn't really matter. Uh, not for what we're doing right now. Anyway, so we want to do like pure fluix. So let's grab one of these. We want to make sure that there is only space on this drive for one of these things. I put something in the system. I don't know what it was, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so partitioned include precise. So this thing will only allow Fluix, pure Fluix crystals onto it at this point. And we can change this up at any time, so that's fine. So we're going to want this to be part of some kind of a network that has a storage cell. So we can go ahead and do that. Yeah, that connects right there. Uh, let's put the partitioned one in here. Okay, so this drive, this network right now, only accepts pure Fluix crystals. From here, we can export it back into like this interface, right? Uh, let's grab. Oh, that must have been what I put in there. <laughs> what was our export bus? All right, so we'll export this from this sub network back into our main network, like so. And just connect this up with a little bit of cable. We got to make sure those do not touch. We can do something like this. I'll rework this cabling so it looks nicer. Do this back just so those aren't connected anymore. Okay, so this will be a sub network here. That's gonna be a sub network there. And then this is our main network here. We just need to get some power between these two cables or I guess these would work as well. So we're gonna need some more of our quartz fiber. Like so, we'll just use one of the red cables. We actually only need the glass fiber on one side you don't need it on two. We'll disconnect this just to make this look nicer down here as well. There we go. Cool. All right. So yeah, the power is coming from here over there. And then from uh, this one over into this sub network. And this only allows pure Fluix. So we can grab, let's grab some pure Fluix just to make sure this is actually going to work. Let's grab some of this and we'll grab, oh, I guess we have glass or something we can test that with. Okay, so if we put in a glass block right here, the glass block is down there. Oh, you know what? We never hooked up <laughs> the annihilation plane. Uh, let's grab that real quick. So we want a piece of glass or something right there. We'll put the annihilation plane on top of that. Okay, and then we need to run some kind of a network cable over to it. So we will connect that right like that. Okay, so I think we should be good with this. Yeah, the annihilation plane is on. You can see the little scan lines going across. So if we put in the piece of glass like we did before, that should just sit on the annihilation plane. Where did that go? I didn't drop it. Okay, there it goes. Yeah, it dropped down. Oh, it's on that piece of glass. That's right, so it's not actually on the annihilation plane. Uh, so we can just drop these in right now. Okay, so it's just sitting right there. It's not going in. So that's going to be like the crystals that are growing. Now, if we do the stack of pure Fluex on here. Yeah, those all get sucked up into the system and they're here in the chest. So the next step of this is we just need to tell this export bus to export the certain items that we don't want. Or I guess that we want back in our system. So in this case, we'd want one of these Fluix crystals on here, like so. Put the rest of those away. So yeah, those are slowly going to be exported back into our main system. So if we come back up here, we do pure Fluix, we can see this number increasing. Yeah. So this is going to be a perfect thing. Now, another, uh, another thing we're going to have to do, let's do... Uh, the dust, we're going to need sand. So we can make these seeds. Okay. Um, over here in our pattern terminal, we need to switch this over from crafting pattern to processing pattern. And we can tell it that two of these seeds are going to equal two of these pure Fluix. We can encode the pattern. So two Fluix seeds equals two pure Fluix crystal. Cool. Uh, we can put the seeds in here. 
And let's come down. We'll put the water back in here. I don't think it's going to suck up the water, hopefully. I think we're fine with that. Okay, now if we put the pattern right here, like so, uh, when we tell the system to make the pure Fluix crystal, it should put the dust, or I guess the seeds, into this thing. They should drop down, and when they grow up, they'll be sucked back into the system. Uh, one more thing we could do to make sure this is acting correctly. If we right-click on this, we can make sure the arrow is pointing towards... Is that not a thing you can do? I thought there was an arrow. <laughs> um, maybe that isn't a thing anymore. Oh, no, the, you can see an arrow right there. Yeah, so the arrow is pointing into this interface, so it won't go into any other inventory just to make sure nothing else weird happens, that the items always go this way. Okay, so if we tell the system right now to make the pure, just middle click on this and tell it to make one next. So it's going to do the seeds. We should see them fall down into this thing. Yeah, we got seeds down there. You can see them right on top of that annihilation plane. So as soon as those grow up into the Fluex crystals, they will be sucked up by the annihilation plane and then put into our system. So this is like a fully working system. Obviously, it's ugly. <laughs> it doesn't look great. We can go ahead and set this in the wall or we can rewire this thing so it looks a lot better. Oh my goodness, guys. I was just taking a look at the time on the video and yeah, we are we are there. <laughs> it's time to end the episode. Uh, yeah, I was having so much fun playing around with all those applied energistic stuff. Lost track of time. And yeah, we kind of went a little bit longer than normal, but that's not a big deal, right? Anyway, guys, uh, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.